Okay, well, hi, Ryan. Thanks for talking hey, to me today. I appreciate it. I, I enjoyed the film. Um, can you start off by talking about what it was that attracted you to the role that made you want to do it? I've always loved sci-fi and the amalgamation of a love story and a thriller under the sci-fi guys was pretty kind of powerful to me. And the fact that this was a more character driven piece as opposed to a world of fake hologram screens or high tech gadgetry and gimmetry, it really felt like an extension of the world as it is now more near fi than sci-fi, uh, very kind of almost tangible, almost scarily so. Yeah, I was going to ask, it, it's a very, um, it doesn't have a lot of action. It's mostly dialogue, obviously, and it's kind of slow paced and it reveals things very slowly. Does that make it harder as an actor to kind of keep the momentum going? No, I don't feel like that's, that's, that's not really my job, you know, is to, that's, that's, that's more like Ivan to sort of make sure that the pacing is there. I, don't get me wrong. There's, there's still a, um a burden of sorts to to make sure that um i'm still remembering where i came from and where i'm going to that there is a an overall kind of pace to the performance uh, but from a, a pace for the movie that's sort of something i leave up to ivan but there's yeah I, I think it was important to know that there was so much said there was more said that um, in between the words and in the silences than, than what these characters were actually kind of articulating or verbalizing, I should say. Right, right. Um, so uh, what part of the character did you, I, I guess, what part was the easiest for you to connect to, to him as a character and what was the most difficult part? The most difficult part was the emotionless aspect to it, the lack of remorse, the, um, this real heart and soul. You know, that's uh, I'm a I'm a bit more of a sensitive type of a guy. So to just sort of block off all those filters, I guess, that I would normally kind of approach every day with and my fellow humans with to sort of uh, literally shut that part of, uh, you know, my my psyches down. It was uh, quite. Um, draining i guess you know by the this is this was a very kind of draining if not by far the um the uh yeah the, the most hardened character i've ever played in that regard but then finding finding the gear shift and the trajectory shift as to when he does start sort of falling in love with april i think that was a really interesting thing as to how that was it was almost like a, a small leak in a roof that just sort of got bigger and bigger um, as opposed to just that one sort of snap of moment. It was something over the course of time that um, that broke him down. That was really interesting for me. And then realizing, I guess, that the, the one thing, love, that made him feel most alive was the only thing that could kill him. You know, I thought that was a really interesting kind of a uh, juxtaposition as well. Oh, the other thing I want to ask is, and and you may this may be a no, but um, I know as an actor, a lot of times you may get like more than we as an audience do, and we don't get a whole other than knowing he doesn't, you know, love. We don't get a whole lot on him. Were you given more on like his backstory and his information from the the you know the writer other than what's in the film that helped you? Uh, yeah, I mean there was because Ivan had been sort of permeating on this for sort of eight years. There were not necessarily, yeah, there, there were different versions of it. And there was sort of, uh, there were backstories that we sort of discussed and um, there were different uh, voiceovers too, the Jack's voiceover that sort of uh, guides us through the movie. There were different versions of that, but it was all, it was all still in the ballpark. There's still supposed to be somewhat of a mystery sort of behind his, his existence. You know, Dr. Bergman, played by Hugo, sort of does his best of sort of unlocking a lot of that. But I think what I love about Ivan's filmmaking as well is that he leaves a lot of those decisions up to the audience. It lets them kind of use their imagination and where does it take them? You know, I think that's one of my favorite quotes is by Einstein is, and he says that the greatest thing that we can experience is the mysterious. And I think Ivan does a great job in this sci-fi world of, of leaving the mystery there. 
yeah, yeah, it's, it's very open. And um, can you, and you, you've talked a little bit about this, but can you talk a little bit more about kind of the themes and what you pull from it? What, do you, what does it mean to you? Because it is so kind of open-ended. Yeah, I think it, yeah, I, I believe that we've invested so much into sort of technology and into machines. And uh, I really feel like this is a, a call to arms to invest in the human condition. Ultimately, that's what I get from it. Okay. Can you talk about working with Hugo? Yeah. Uh, he's, he's Australian royalty. You know, he's, everyone knows and loves Hugo. And uh, I guess we're both in the position where we're fortunate enough to meet some of our, our, our idols. Um, and, you know, sometimes they don't always live up to the pedestals we put them on. But uh, Hugo, for me, just... He was like levitating above his pedestal. He's such a uh, a wonderfully curious and um, graceful man, and just so um, inspiring. He he turned up for a day where he wasn't even supposed to be working in full clothes, and sort of said to Ivan, "Look, I'm here to work. Even if you want me to swing a boom, I'm I'm here. I'll I'll, I'll make it happen." So he's he's that type of uh, generosity that I think we need a little bit more in the world, to be honest. Um, you, you talk about him being Australian. You just made me wonder. Um, doing an accent, or I guess changing or not accent, not exactly doing an accent, but um, how is that difficult for you? And are you the kind of person that sort of stays in it all day, or do you kind of go in and out as you do scenes? The accent. Um, well, on this one, it was not necessarily the, the accent was easy, but it was the the tonalities within the accent that we really worked that we really wanted to work on. I mean, Jack isn't someone that does a lot of talking. Um, and up until April, we kind of assumed that he really just sort of, uh, uh, he doesn't talk to anyone. He's very much a recluse. And so we, we were, we really wanted to get a real kind of gravelly husky kind of tone behind that sort of American accent um, and almost painful to talk that type of a, of a voice. Um, yeah, it's something that I've been, just been doing it for so long. I don't really have that many talents, but um, accents seems to be one of them. I, I never really sort of think about it when I'm on set because I kind of just let the truth speak for itself at that point. I do all my work well before that. So, um, yeah, it's just, I don't know. It seems to come relatively naturally. Okay. All right. So um, did you, you film this recently during COVID? No, it was, oh. it was sort of six, eight months just before uh, sort of that all that madness. Yeah, we shot in uh, Mong Kok in Hong Kong um, and in Brisbane and in the Gold Coast. Okay, Australia. well, then I can ask you how that affected it if you didn't film it that way. All right. No. Um, what about working with, with Jillian? Can you talk a bit about, about getting to know her? Yeah, absolutely. I, I can't wait to see where her career takes her. I think she was uh, – that was a real um, – godsend to to find her i know ivan had spent close to a year trying to sort of find the perfect april and he was sort of willing to walk away from the movie had he not found her um and jillian sort of had a lot of similarities to april in terms of sort of the the migrant um um uh, backstory and and Julian was I guess gracious enough to really bring a lot of that kind of uh, her upbringing into this and it really helped sort of add a a layer of authenticity to what she did and it helped inspire me to kind of dredge up my own demons. Do you have a favorite scene you can tease? Uh, yeah, I love I love when I believe he sort of first gets the, the his first ping of love. I remember when I first read it from Ivan, it was just it was really simply written. But again, like I kind of told you before, Jamie, it was it was sort of leaving it up to your imagination. And it was yeah, it's just her singing the words to, you know, this sort of Taiwanese song and she's singing to. Um, it's a one-way mirror that she can see herself, but she can't see Jack, and Jack can see her as he's singing, as she's singing. Um, and it's just uh, the first time he gets this sort of chemical reaction within his body of not sure what it is. That's the first rumblings of love. Yeah, that for me is.
Do you have any other projects uh, coming up that you want to promote? Oh, geez, yeah. Um, I have a few. I have a, one with uh, J.K. Simmons um, called Glorious. This is a, the two of us sort of for 90 minutes stuck in a truck stop restaurant. That, that, that'll be pretty amazing. Um, yeah, I have another movie called The Portrait that'll be out at the end of the year. Um, and I'm about to go off and shoot an FX series called Kindred. Oh, cool. All right. Yeah. And then uh, before you go, I wanted to ask you at least one True Blood question because I, I really enjoyed that show <laughs> quite a while ago now, it seems like. Um, when you kind of think back about that, what's kind of like one memory this long after that kind of stands out after all this time that kind of sums it up? Honestly, honestly, Jamie, just the length of time, like the seven seasons, you just don't get that this day and age. No, like you don't. To, 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 that's like the length of school, you know, to, to think that I, I lived and we, we were working with people that, you know, were, were single when we when we first started working. And then by the end of that sort of seven, eight years, you know, married with kids. And so you really get to sort of live and breathe with, with your fellow workers, both cast and crew. And it was... Um, yeah, that in itself was just a, a beautiful kind of fraternity of sorts, a, a brotherhood, a sisterhood. It was, it was lovely. Yeah, that's that's the biggest thing I remember because that's the I've never worked on anything for that length of time. Yeah, you don't think about it. You really don't see anything that long anymore. Oh, Things are no. a lot different. <laughs> well, there's just so much noise these days. And back then, too, you would have to wait a week before watching everything. You couldn't binge watch like you can these days. Yeah, yeah. Now you get everything all right away. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time and um, look forward to people seeing the show so we can talk about it. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks so much. Great. Have a good day. Bye-bye. You too, Thanks. Bye. Bye.